First, I'd just like to clarify, I am not Pastor David. <laughs> there is one distinct difference between me and Pastor David. I am taller. <laughs> I don't have hair. He has hair. But I'm taller than Pastor David. That's out of the way. Again, good morning. Good to see everybody. Beautiful, beautiful faces. My brothers and my sisters, if you know Jesus. And if you don't know him, we want you to get to know him. But as Pastor David spoke to me about two and a half months ago, said, would you be willing on the 24th to share a message? And at the time, I was kind of undecided. And he said, well, think about it. Before the week out, we spoke again. I said, okay, I would do it, Pastor. But I feel unworthy. Because this is a very great opportunity. It's a great position. And it's a great thing when you have to stand before the body of Christ and share from God's holy word, you feel unworthy. Why did God choose me to share something with his people? I am unworthy. I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. But my father says, whatever step you take, I will never forsake you, and I will never leave you. His word decrees I will be even with you until the end of the age. One verse of scripture says, whose report shall we believe? So the best thing I can do is believe the report of my father. So I'm not up here in raw strength. Ever since that two and a half months, Pastor David brought it to me. I've been praying, I've been crying, praying some more, crying some more. Still fighting with the Lord. Lord, I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy. But as the sister was singing, I forgot her name, she shared a portion that she was singing about the throne. Something else that got as the throne of your heart. But God won't himself to be the throne of our hearts. Not the cares of the world, not the things in the world, because the word of God says we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are just passing through. Before we go any further, let me pray. <laughs> Let's bow our heads this morning. Father, in your strong, mighty, and powerful name, Again, I feel unworthy, Lord, for what you have called for me to do. But you have told me time after time that you will never forsake me and you will never leave me. They will be with me even until the end of the age. This morning, Lord, anoint this piece of clay to speak your word truthfully, speak that word boldly, and speak your word accurately. That after everything is said and done, that your people shall be edified and built up because of your word, not Roy's, but because of your word. All hail King Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. We bow down to you, the holy and righteous Father, that knows everything about us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do. Let Roy decrease that you may increase. Thank you in that matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. I don't have a title, but if I did... <laughs> It would be twofold. It would be something on the line of discipleship. And also it would be something on the line of 
true worship. But I don't have a title. So if you have your Bibles, the 16th chapter of St. Matthew, starting at verse 24. Matthew 16, verse 24. Jesus, el es Señor. St. Matthew, chapter 16, starting at verse 24. And Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man is to come out to me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. We're talking about the king of glory. And he's giving us, again, instructions. As my brother Zach always be trying to get us to that next level in worship. God is looking for you and I to get to that next level. But he said in 1624 of Matthew, and if any man is to come out to me, let him deny himself. And that word deny means to simply humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Or submit yourself. Submit your will. As Jesus always spoke when he was physically on planet earth. Father, not my will be done, but thine be done. Or that same word deny can mean surrender. Surrender to the lordship and rulership of almighty God because he has everything in the palm of his hands. He rule and reign supreme. Submit. Surrender. When we do that, we don't realize he has our best interest at heart. All he asks for you and I to do is to line up with what he's already doing. Everything in his word is going to be fulfilled. Count on it. Count on it. But he said to his children, humble yourself. Submit yourself. Surrender yourself. Because I have your best interest at heart. I am your heavenly father. I want what's best for you. That's why the word of God decrees that he sent Jesus Christ. The Bible says, not just we will have life, but have life more abundantly. But he asks us, because we have a free will. He gave us a free will. He's not going to force you to do anything against your will. But he asks us to submit and surrender to him. But we're going to fight him. Because we want to have a little say-so in everything that we think we need to have it in. He is not the co-pilot of our life. He is the pilot in charge. He don't, have, he don't co-anything. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. He is not co-anything. If you don't believe me, ask Satan. That's why he got kicked out of heaven. He thought he was going to be co-rulership of heaven. He got kicked out. Then he was in the garden, got kicked out of the garden. And when you follow God's word from Genesis to Revelation, you kick him out of your lives again. Because he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last, the one who was, who is, and who is to come, and all his power and glory. When Jesus Christ arose on that third day, the word of God says he had took back the keys. Life, death, hell, and the grave. He ruled and reigned supreme. That 24th verse says, deny thyself, take up thy cross. What is it in your own walk that has taken the place where Jesus Christ should be in your life? Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Not second, not third. It said first. Take up that thing, whatever it is. He said, take it up. Whatever it is, you know where it is. 
Some of you already seen it on your minds. Jesus say, take it up. But be rest assured when you start walking according to the word of God, truly, being that true worshiper, the world is going to come against you. So when it, that phrase say, take up thy cross, sometimes your life really and truly will be in jeopardy. Will you still take up that cross? Or will you succumb to the standards and the ways of the world? Jesus said, take up your cross. During the day that Jesus physically walked on planet Earth, when criminals was charged and found to be a criminal, they literally had to take their cross on their bike, headed for their own execution. You're going to be at risk sometimes because of your stance for the kingdom of God. Will you still take up that cross? Our Father always has our best interests at heart. If he say take up that cross, then we shouldn't question him. We should do exactly what he says. Take up that cross. There will be people in your job or wherever you go, even at Wally World. There will be people that not only literally will try to kill you, there will be some that try to kill you with their tongue. I thought he or she was a child of God, a Christian. And you're doing everything that you are supposed to do for the kingdom of God, but they still come against you. Because the Bible says when we get in that hour where they're calling wrong right and wrong, right wrong, it's not long before he returned. We're living that today. Even though when they come against you, call you everything under the sun except the child of God, keep stepping forward for the kingdom. Don't deter off course. Don't run away from it. I read a slogan that says, fear has two meanings. Face everything and run, or face everything and rise. And I believe New Covenant is getting ready to rise for the kingdom of God. The devil don't like it, but New Covenant is getting ready to rise for the kingdom of God. That means this young man right here, Zach, is going to be a focal point and God is getting ready to usher in a new level in our praise and worship. Focal point. Pray for him. The devil going to try to get him, come against him. Pray for him. But guess what? There's a song we sing sometimes. We are surrounded. Not by our enemy. <laughs> we ain't surrounded by the enemy. God got us surrounded. Trust him. That word trust me rely. Trust God. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. Trust. Rely on him. Take a stance for the kingdom of God. No matter what come against you, take a stance for the kingdom of God. And that word stance is an acronym for still trust and never doubt. God said, be still and know I am God. Stand. Still trust him. When they talk about you, still trust him. When they call you out of your name, still trust him. When it looked like you may be carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, still trust him. Because you and God are the majority. So-called friends, when they outnumber you and try to get you to change your stance for the kingdom of God, they are the minority because you and God make the majority. Don't succumb to what the friends are saying and doing. Stand true. Be a disciple of Jesus. Give him true worship. When we really and truly give him true worship, we submit. We surrender. 
and we humble ourselves, knowing that he always, not sometimes, he always has our best interests at heart. And that last portion in that verse said, follow me. Follow me. In the Greek, that word, that word follow me, follow, obey. <laughs> that ain't nothing deep. Obeying. <laughs> Just obeying. Follow. I remember when I was in, matter of fact, my family and I, we live in Swainsboro, 36 miles from Statesboro, the other borough. When I was a small child in Swainsboro, we used to, the neighborhood kids used to get there, we just play this game called follow the leader. There was one person, the focal point, and everybody else, whatever the leader did, everybody else out here had to do exactly what the leader did. Let's, let's try it. Oh, you, out, you didn't have your hand up. <laughs> but the premise of the game was, if you didn't do what the leader do, and you caught, was caught not doing it, you're out of the game. But guess what? This is no game. Our Christian walk that our Heavenly Father has called us on is every day supposed to glorify Him. Because there is somebody your life is going to draw into the kingdom of God. It's not a game. This is warfare. The Bible says we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Principalities, wicked spirits. We are in warfare. In every conflict there ever been, every battle, every war, there's always spoils. If I win the war, then I get this because these are the spoils. But the warfare that God has deputized you and I in, the spoils of this warfare is the souls of people. And we can't let our Heavenly Father down. That's why in our NC group, I'm so glad to be in the NC group I am in because one of the leaders always tell us the Christ in you is the hope of glory. The Christ in you is the hope of glory. That God that you always talk about to other people living in you, that person can't see him, but when he's living on the inside of you, there are going to be fruits and attributes that are going to show that person that this God that they, you are talking about is truly real. Because it says, if any man or woman be in Christ, the key is to be in Christ. Then he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Being in Christ. We're talking about discipleship or true worship, but that's not my title. Romans chapter 12. Verse 1, Paul, when he was speaking to the church at Rome, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He said, present your body. You want to give God, our Heavenly Father, the true worship? Present your body to him. All of you. Not certain portions. All of you. Because he don't owe us anything, but we owe him everything. Present your body to him. He paid a debt he didn't know. We owed a debt we couldn't pay. We owe him everything. To worship. Give him your entire being. I beseech you. That word beseech me, I beg. I urge you. Present your body to him. Because if it had not been for the Lord, I don't know where Roy would be. I don't know. I'd have been many times in close car wrecks. 
the Lord brought me out. Nothing happened. Used to work in the penal system. Had to go break up fights, inmates fighting. They all blooding up. Nothing happened to Roy. Years ago, a short testimony. Roy was one year old when his mother, when the Lord took his mother home. One. Didn't know anything about her. Don't remember her ever holding Roy in her arms. Don't remember that. Seen pictures, heard stories of other siblings telling about her. Roy don't remember. But I knew, and I still know, even at the age of one, somewhere in that, she had to hold Roy in her hands. Somewhere in that, she changed Roy pooty diaper. <laughs> real diaper, cloth diaper, not no pampers, real cloth diapers. You go wash them and then use them over and over. She had to do that. But at the age of one, the Lord took her home. Let me show you how good God is. My father lived right next door to his sister. Her name was Lenny, Aunt Lenny, L-I-N-N-I-E, a powerful woman of God. Used to call these little boys into her living room when they was having, her and her best friend was having Bible study, another lady, Miss Margaret. Called these little boys in her Bible study, praying over them, reading the scriptures over them, Praying some more, reading over them. These little boys, as they start understanding, they know what time Aunt Lenny and her friend Miss Mark are gonna have Bible study. We start going and hide, run away. <laughs> we, we tried our best to run away, but every hiding place we found, she'd be calling our voice. It looked like she was coming straight where we were. <laughs> but we knew she prayed over us. Now, as we grew up, we didn't do everything correct. Still, when and did all the things we thought we were big and bad enough to do. But now when we get together on holidays, we reminisce about Aunt Lenny and Miss Margaret how the prayers that was prayed over these little kids today has been answered. Every last one of my brothers, except for one, is in a ministry in whatever city they're in today, working in the ministry because of the prayers. Roy wasn't always like that. Roy used to run away from God. And every where I thought I was running away from him, it's like I ran right into him again. God is everywhere. I couldn't go anywhere without running into God. I used to drive down the street, early part of, and every utility pole looked like a cross. How many crosses they got on the highway? <laughs> every time I go to another cross, I start just one cross, two cross, three cross. God will show up everywhere. Let me tell you, you cannot run anywhere and hide from God. I tried. He won. God is unbeatable. God is unmovable. God is undefeated. God is still the champion of the universe. Undefeated. We'll never lose a title. No matter what so-called atheists say, or evolutionists, our God never lose a title, never lost a battle. Still ruling, still reigning throughout all this time. He said, before one word fell from this book, heaven and earth both 
or pass away. It's not going to fail because he can't fail. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's simply just the right thing to do. Don't kick against the prick because everything in here is going to be fulfilled. So it behooves all of us to line up with what God is going to do anyway. If I don't align up with it, it's not going to stop what God is going to do anyway. He's still going to do it. It's still going to come to pass. So it will benefit us all and line up with what God is doing. Just line up. 12 and 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And be not conformed to this world. Don't comply because we don't fit into this world. Don't yield to the standards of the earthly desires and earthly rewards of this world. We were not put here to fit in. We was put here to glorify, to give reverence, to magnify and honor our Heavenly Father. When you got a dollar in your pocket, give him reverence. When you got one red penny in your pocket, give him reverence. Because whether you got that penny or the dollar, it does not change who he is. <laughs> He's still God. And one day, the word of God decrees that he shall return in all his power and glory. One day, that's going to take place. And I pray, whenever that day is, I see everybody in here, every face, we all can meet again in heaven. Do not be conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. Transform or a metamorphosis. When you have the caterpillar, the caterpillar is going to eventually have a metamorphosis or a transformation and become a butterfly. That butterfly can Soar and go to every plant, do whatever you want to do. And the butterfly me mentality or mindset is, I never, ever want to be a caterpillar again. That's the mentality of the butterfly. But the caterpillar, I hope and wish I could soon become a butterfly. You are butterflies. Soar for the kingdom of God. Keep soaring, S-O-A-R, for the kingdom of God. Every person in here is a butterfly. Keep doing what you're doing for the kingdom of God. I know my time is getting short because Pastor David said, whatever message you have, you got 30 or 35 minutes. Don't tell Pastor David I went to 40 or 45, he would get me. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Zach, Zach, help a brother out. <laughs> the week, about a week and a half ago, Pastor David, I was in his office. We had a little chat, had some prayer time together, and he, that's when he shared with me 30 or 35 minutes. <laughs> he said, but don't overthink it. You are not me. You're not Pastor David. Just be yourself. That's what he said. I said, I think I could do that, Pastor David. <laughs> One last verse. Well, two. <laughs> I repent. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't tell him, Pastor. <laughs> Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12, 
verse 13, Renee? Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Fear God. That phrase means give him reverence. It's not the type of fear that some of you may be thinking. Okay, if I slip up, that lightning bolt come down. That's not what they're talking about. Give him reverence. Give him honor. Give him praise and glory. Recognize who he is. Because we are who we are because of him. We have what we have because of him. We breathe this air this morning when we got up because of him. The clothes you got on is because of him. Everything that you may have in your possession or you think is in your possession is because of him. He has entrusted us to be good stewards over those things. Use them to help build up his kingdom. Use them to bless somebody else. The last verse. This is the last one. <laughs> In Psalms 23, that particular verse that says, and your cup run over, all that, that part that run over is not for you to keep getting spiritually fat. If it's running over, God expect you and I bless somebody with it. That's why he let yours run over. Keep encouraging. Keep assisting. Keep admonishing. Keep building somebody up because God will continually, as long as you pour it out, God will make sure you got yours. Do you trust him? Who is on the throne of your heart? Is he in first place where he's supposed to be? Matthew 6, 33. <laughs> but seek ye first. If you have your Bible in front of you, there should no Bible in here say second, third, or fourth. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Trust him. Trust him. Our Heavenly Father has our best interest at heart. He don't need to be co-pilot of anything. He need to be the pilot. Got full control. Full control. Deny ourselves. Take up our cross. And simply obey him. But in that portion when it's time to obey him, there will be things that contradict our thinking. And then we try to rationalize, should I act on that because it contradicts my thinking? The word of God says, there is a way that seemeth right to a man. When God contradicts your thinking, still follow what God says. Follow him. Take heed to, apply it, abide, walk in it. A little down the road, God will show us why he had us to do that particular thing or whatever it is. Trust him. Word trust me and rely. And even if the whole world come against you because of your stance for the kingdom of God, you continue to stand. After done all to stand, stand therefore. Still trust and never doubting. He will not, he cannot, he shall not let you down. That's our Heavenly Father. Let's bow his. Most gracious Heavenly Father, once again, we're so grateful and we are so thankful that you have adopted us into the family of the beloved, where we cry, Abba Father. Father, we love you. 
You may have one phrase of the song said earlier, I'm sorry. If we have missed you in any form or fashion, we're sorry. Remind us again throughout your word that you have our best interests at heart. For your word declare and decree that you so loved us that you gave your only begotten son. And your son was obedient to the death of the cross, even though it looked like straight out murder. Jesus said, no man take my life. I lay it down. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus laid down his life for us. We know that you don't owe us anything, but we owe you everything. Keep us in the palm of your hands. And we bless you today. All hell keep Jesus. In that mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.